All right, in this video, I want to talk about how to make a rail car a little bit wider. So uh, I'm going to drag over a model here. So let's say you have um, an 89 foot rail car. This is overall nine foot wide. Put two of them side by side, you'll get 18 feet. Right, let's, uh, let's just pull some measurements on here real quick. That way uh, we can take a look. So from outer edge to outer edge, we're, we're at about nine foot, right? Nine, two and seven eighths. Let's just call it nine foot. Then inside is right about eight six, right? So that's eight six there. So if you were to put two of these side by side, nine foot, and so you get eighteen foot. But let's say you wanted twenty foot, twenty feet. Okay. So whenever we put two rail cars side by side, I'm just going to build this. We'll just go through the process of how to do this. Uh, so if this rail car was in our shop, I mean, if you want to take a look at, you know, what this car looks like, it's a it's a pretty standard car. Um, nothing too terribly exciting about it. But uh, the first thing we would do if this car was in our shop and we're putting two cars side by side, these uh, these C channels are called side sills. So the first thing we're going to need to do is uh, is trim these side sills down. Okay, so let's just do that real quick. I'm going to take those two side sills, make them unique, go into them, and we need to just trim that down. That way they don't get in our way. So we're just going to draw a line here right across and then we're just gonna cut that down cut that down to nothing okay so now we have something like that okay now we've got a little line there there we go okay so now we have this rail car with only one side so now that side still is still you can still see it on this side right but it's just been just been trimmed off so now um Let's take this rail car, and now we're going to put it over here. Okay, we're going to take this car, we're going to flip it. Okay, now we're going to butt these two cars up. Okay, so usually you don't want, whenever you're doing this, two cars side by side, you don't want them so tight like that, because uh, it's impossible to do. So we'll actually leave like maybe a one inch gap there. Let's just make a two inch gap. Okay, so if we were to do that, um, what is our overall width? So the overall driving lane is from here to to about here. So we have, you know, just shy of 18 feet. Okay, uh, let me pull that measurement again. Delete that. So in this corner. To that corner okay so 17 feet or so okay so so let's say we wanted that to be closer to 20 feet right um, let me uh, let me do some math here real quick okay so in order to make this 20 foot wide I would need to move this rail car out move this one out uh, two foot four and three quarter inches. Okay, if I did that, I would get 20 feet overall. Okay, that's quite a bit of a gap there. So how do we, how are we gonna make that work? All right, so overall 20 foot now, which is perfect for uh, those that need 20 foot wide, but how are we gonna fill that gap? Well, let's, uh, let's talk about that for a second. Okay, so we can easily do that by just filling this in with structural, structural steel. So the first thing we're going to do, uh, even if you were to put the two cars close together, first thing we're going to do is put a put a piece of flat bar over here. See how um, whenever we cut this this rail car, see how there's a bit of a gap there, uh, or that lip kind of hangs up there. Um, that that's going to happen in, in real life too. Whenever you cut this rail car down, there's just going to be a little bit of gap there. So what we always do is uh, uh, is we're just going to put a little piece of flat bar here, quarter inch, quarter inch, and it's going to be uh, three inches, quarter inch, right? So it's going to look something like that, and it's going to be, um, you know, uh, 90 feet long, close enough, right? So let's just call this um, sh um, shim. Drag this over so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, just a shim. Okay. Let me try that again. G shim replace. Okay, so now that we have that, we're gonna we're gonna pick a nice bright red to paint that. Okay, so now we know there's a shim there. Okay, 
and um, what I should do is go ahead and just cut that, go into the rail car, paste that back in place. That way both cars have that. Okay, so now you have a shim there because on top of that there's going to be a plate that, that we're going to add later. But we'll show, I'll show you that later. Okay, so now how, how do we fill in that gap? Okay. Uh, let me let me draw a piece of angle real quick. So we're going to draw, um, I'm just going to draw a pre pretty rudimental angle. So we'll, we'll call it like a, a three inch uh, by three inch angle, right? Let's, let's add some numbers to that. Actually, well, I'm just going to import that, uh, import a model real quick. I'm going to get rid of that and import an angle model. All right, let's bring that model in. And this is just a three by three by quarter inch angle. Now, I'm not saying this is gonna work for your particular project. Um, I'm just going off of memory here, okay? So, um, uh, I gotta be careful that, that, that I don't, I don't um, put, uh, put our liability out there. So, uh, I'm just uh, showing you an example. So, if you really wanna build this, please consult with us and hire our engineering services and we'll give you the blueprints and we'll, we'll do it the right way. So, this is just kinda of shooting from the hip. What we've done in the past okay so uh, don't, don't hold me to this this is just a uh, kind of a generic example so in this example um, that may or may not work for your application i'm going to use a three by three by quarter inch angle iron okay so i imported it here i'm going to make that five inches okay uh, you'll see why in a minute here so we got that five inch angle and now i'm going to take this angle um, and i'm just going to uh, rotate it so it's so it is in line with this right here. Okay, does that make sense to you? So just a little piece of angle. I'm gonna, well, let's, let's put color that too. Let's color that maybe um, maybe green, huh? Let's find a green color. How about that green? Okay, actually I'm gonna go into the model, paint that green, okay. So now I have this green that's attached to the side cell. Okay, so and this, uh, actually, I would like to move over maybe like a a quarter inch or so. That way, I get a good weld bead here. And so this, I would actually weld this this um angle here. I would weld to the side cell. Okay, run a bead here, run a bead of weld here, run a bead of weld right here. And I'm going to take this one and I'm going to make another one. Move that over. Okay, I'm going to flip this now. Green. Okay. Let's butt them up, and then I'm going to leave a four-inch gap. Okay, so in between these two pieces here, let me zoom out so you can kind of see that. Okay, so I just on one of them I have this angle here, and in between there is a four-inch gap. Okay, got that. And you'll see why here in a minute. I'm going to take these two now. I'm going to make them into a group. Let's call this angled group. Nothing exciting. Okay. That way they're paired up. Now I'm going to import another piece here. Uh, let me find it real quick. Okay. I'm going to bring a model over another another piece. Edit. Okay, so let's just bring this in. So this is a um, this is a uh, tube steel, four by four by quarter inch. Uh, let's go into it. I'm just going to make it um, five inches for now. And while I'm in it, I might as well give it some color. What color should we paint this? Let's do. How about blue? Huh? Let's pick a nice blue. How about that blue there? I like that blue. Actually, I gotta select the whole thing. Oh, it's maybe too dark. Let's go with a lighter blue. There we go. That's a good blue. Okay. So now we have um, now we have that. How is that gonna work? We're gonna take this. We're gonna rotate it. Let's see if you can figure this out. Get it on the blue axis. Okay. So now that it's going to just slip inside here. So now we're going to take this tube. We're going to move it right inside here. Let's force it on red. Get it, you know, so anywhere inside this area here would be good. Actually, it would be good if I 
align it up properly. So I'm going to move this so it is right here. Okay, so now notice that it's going to, it should fit. Now I, I put these at four inches exactly. When, when you do this out in the field, you don't want to get it four inches exactly. You want to give yourself about an eighth inch of a, a wood wood room, maybe sixteenths or so. So now when I move this, see how it's going to slide perfectly inside here. Okay, see that? And um, where you put this at, obviously you want it as close to the uh, to the rail car site so as possible. But um, really, you have some wiggle room here. So if you wanted to put it, let's just put it right there. So that's um that's pretty close. And as far as height goes, we're going to drop this down, and we're going to make the same height as this red plate here. Okay. So that way, um, the top of this and the top of this are on the same plane. Okay, and uh, in this model, let me, let me just get a measuring tape real quick and see um, how far I have that. In this model, I have it about um, about half inch or so. So um, we have some wiggle room there. So now, what, what good does that do? Okay, well, I guess I should have taken this. I'm going to take this copy, this green piece here. I'm going to take that and I'm going to flip it. And... Hopefully you can figure out where I'm going to put this at. This is going to go right up against this side sill. Okay. So now I'm going to take this tube and I'm going to make it longer somewhere inside here. Okay. Looks something like that. Is it starting to make sense, hopefully? All right, so um, now in this particular case, this tube, let's measure it from here to here. This tube is just shy of three feet. Now, if I was cutting it, I'd probably just cut it at three feet. But you see here, this tube, once you get um, those uh, green angles in place, you have the green angles in place, right all you're going to do now is drop that tube right in place okay now let's uh so once you get that in place i'm going to create a little bundle here i'm going to so i'm going to copy this or get this and this and this and just make a comp uh, a bundle or a, or a component let's call it um filler assembly okay so now if i just take this and i start duplicating this let's say um, every maybe uh, uh, 36 inches, right? Whatever the engineering calls for. So I'm gonna do this all the way down 36 inches. Let me go ahead and do this. Uh, I won't waste your time. I'll pause it for a second. All right, so I kind of placed all these in here. Um, the um, exact locations and spacing I didn't really worry about too much but that's what it's going to look like okay um, and let's uh the neat thing about this program is we can now lift this piece up let's just lift it up and out of the way just to get it out of the way come on baby uh, let's just move out of the way 48 inches okay so this is what it's going to look like right so you're going to have all these um green pieces in place. So you got the rail car set in place side by side. Um, then you'll cut the side seals off and then you'll add these green angles all the way down. These are happen to be three by three by quarter, but whatever they need to be, our engineers will tell you exactly what they need to be. The size of all the material varies depending on uh, your exact conditions and your load. Um, so you weld these, you weld all these angles all the way down. So you have a whole bunch of small pieces of angle. Now that's that's gonna be pretty simple to do. You can do this over the creek with the, with the, with the water underneath there. They're they're pretty simple. It just takes one guy to lean over. Uh, obviously, you do want to wear fall protection, but just lean over, weld each green piece um, to the rail car all the way down. And then once you got those down, you'll just take your blue pieces, your blue pieces, and then just slide them right into place uh, 48 inches and okay so now um, so now that's what it's going to look like 
And as you can recall, the blue pieces are in the same plane or same elevation as the red shims. So at this point, all we got to do now is get a cover plate. Okay, so the framework is there, the skeleton is there. That's what it kind of looks like. Let's look underneath the bridge. That's what it looks like there, okay? Um, so now, what we're going to do next is just cover this whole entire assembly up. So we're going to take a piece of steel. It's going to be quarter inch thick. Maybe, maybe it will be thicker. Um, one, for this illustration, I'm just going to make it quarter inch. Okay. Um, green. One quarter inch. And then back over to here. Okay. Then I'm going to take that, and now we're just going to cover the entire thing up uh, 90 feet long. Okay, and then I'm going to take this, I'm going to call this cover. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to color it. What color should we do this time? Let's do a nice, what color is this? A nice pink looking color. Okay. All right, and that's what you end up with. Now, you have a bridge that is 20 foot wide. You have the nice filler material here, and this will be rated to support whatever kind of vehicular traffic you have. And, um, oh, uh, as far as welding this down, um, uh, same kind of welding pattern for the uh, shim and for the top plate. You're looking at about a quarter inch weld, uh, a two, maybe two on, two on 12 uh, offset stitch welding. So same thing on here two inches every every foot or so. Um, uh, look at your engineering drawings, uh, maybe a little bit more frequent than that, depending on um, the, the, the welding on the top cover plate and also the seam, uh, really depend on your seismic and, and a few other considerations like load and, and um, um, the, the actual use. So there, there's no general uh, rule for, for that, but uh, two on 12 may be, may be good to use if you want to estimate a little tighter or a little more frequency like a two on ten welding pattern or maybe even a three on ten welding pattern three inches of weld uh, ten inches on center or something uh, sometimes we do see that very a little bit depending on application but in this particular case this is what it's going to look like now once you um, paint the bridge let me get uh, kind of a color that we typically paint um, uh, let me find it real quick All right, we'll just pick this saddle brown here. So once you paint the bridges, right, and you paint all this stuff here, I'm gonna go back here and paint all this. So this is um, this is all painted. Let's paint this shim as well. Okay, once you do all that, it's gonna look like a just a one big brown bridge, right? So it looks it looks pretty good, and it's 20 foot wide. So by doing this. Uh, you're going to save yourself a considerable, considerable amount of money because you don't have to um, um, buy a third rail car. You can just make it wider. Uh, there are several different ways uh, to accomplish the same thing, uh, method, uh, but this is just one of them. Um, and there is a bit of a step up here from the deck. This is quarter inch, and that's quarter inch. So that's half inch. So you do have a half inch elevation difference. And we do have um, an anti-slip coating that would actually blend that really well. If you check out our video on YouTube about um, uh, about the anti-slip coating, that'll you know it'll look like asphalt all the way down. So that that's another option. So that's uh, that's it. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to give us a call, um, uh, and we can walk you through it. These are just again general ideas. Um, so uh, refer to your engineering drawing. We don't want a responsibility if you go out and build this without us telling you exactly what kind of steel you have, but. Um, give us a call if you have any questions. We'll be happy to help you. I appreciate it. Thanks. Bye.